conference. And in the first pitch to Mason Mainers, who hit a home run last night, fouled off. Mainers last night hit sixth, had the home run, a three-run shot. He leads off today. Auburn, a team with some power. They'll try to score in a variety of ways. They run the bases. They'll try to. They'll, they'll try to create stolen bases. They'll bunt, sacrifices, bunt for hits, but they've also hit over 40 home runs as a team this season. Yeah, I talked about Jones's upside, and man, he, there, there's a 96 right there on the velocity for his fastball. We've been told that, you know, he could get it up to 97, even 98 at times. We really haven't seen that. But I think we will as the season progresses with kind of his backstory, which we'll get into. Climbs the ladder there again with a 96 mile an hour heater. And gets the opening hitter manners out on strikes. Look at the four seam, top of the zone. Yeah, that's a tough one to hit when it's at your eyes. You're thinking it looks more appetizing. It looks like you can get to it. And the higher the ball, the actual sl actually the slower your bat will travel to it. So it makes it more difficult. Cooper Weiss at the plate. If he gets on, he's one of the best base stealers in the nation. He's 21 of 24 this season on his theft attempts. Last night, he was actually thrown out just for the third time this year. And there's, that's what Auburn will do at times. They'll try to bunt for a base hit, but now Cooper Weiss down in the count after that rolls foul. Really looking for, for Tanner Jones here to, to establish that fastball that's got great velocity, but is, is he going to mix changeup and slider? How much is he going to mix it? And how well can he locate? Because the stuff is there, the upside, as we mentioned, is there, but... The ERA a little inflated, and the starts haven't been tremendous, but, but a big opportunity here as he settles into his third start in conference. Braden Montgomery will take care of the fly ball from Cooper Weiss, and there's two down in the top of the first. Caden Sorrell gets the start in left field for the fourth straight game. The Aggies have started to go with the freshman out there in left. And it means Hayden Schott, who had been in left field, mans the DH spot. That's what the Aggies have gone with in these last four games. It's worked well for them. Sorrell in left and Schott as the DH. Ike Irish. Three hits last night, two of them were infield singles, and we showed you the home run that he hit almost 430 feet over the right field wall. It was his ninth home run of the year. And Irish yesterday extended a hit streak to 12 games in a row. Fastball consistently 96 miles an hour, and that, that's big for, for Tanner Jones. He's been living 91 to 94, maybe 95, but the velocity seems to be a little more consistent, at least in this first inning. Seems to be working up in the zone, too, making it harder for hitters to catch up to it if they try and chase. Let's see where he goes here in a 2-2 count. Off speed in the dirt. The ERA at Jacksonville State was never tremendous for Jones, but man, Coach Schlossnagel and Max Wiener's re reporting and just conversation about Jones is, was always in high regards. Beautiful. Excellent pitch on the inside bottom of the first after Auburn went one, two, three in the top half of the first. Grahovac. One of his three hits was a double. He leads this A&M team in doubles his freshman season with seven. Add to that eight home runs as well. Money, 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 
A lot of expectation on Grahovic. A lot of expectation, and he is undoubtedly living up to it so far this year. Early control issues for Alsa. Three straight to start this game. He's had his control issues throughout his time at Auburn. However, when the fastball and the curveball get established, then he becomes an electric arm. Four pitch walk. That'll get the crowd into it right away. Grahovic, with the walk, has now reached base in 16 consecutive games. You have to face the Bluebell Park crowd and one of the best hitters in the country, Chase Laviolette. Allsup will silence them. Shift to the right side for Jace Lavulette. Three infielders to the right side. And earlier this week, D1 Baseball put out its list of best outfielders in the country thus far this season. Lavulette was fifth on that list. The man behind him, Braden Montgomery, was first. So two of the top five outfielders nationally, they'll hit back to back here tonight for the Aggies as they essentially do every night. Lavulette at the plate. Montgomery awaits on deck. Grahovac is aboard. That's deep. That's opposite field. That's blowing right out of here. That may not have needed any help at all. Jace Lavulette, 13th homer of the year. That's 34 in his relatively short AM career. Almost an identical swing from Laviolette as he put on a ball yesterday, splitting the gaps, a double off the wall last night, today, smashes it off the scoreboard. Look at this swing, staying on a fastball in the outside corner, nonetheless, and a no doubter, especially with that north wind. Montgomery with a bomb last night in the first inning, two run shot, Laviolette, two run shot in the first inning. We just highlighted both of them. Well, with bubbles still in the air, Braden Montgomery to the plate. So today it's Jace Laviolette with the two run homer in the first inning. Yesterday it was Braden Montgomery who did that. He's hit this hard. That bounced into the bullpen. He's got a ground rule double. That was 111 miles per hour off the bat. That is ripped. That was hit so hard. You could even see Bobby Pierce, <laughs> the right fielder. He takes a horrible angle because he doesn't realize that it's 111 off the bat like he could have got there most of the time he could have. He realized he took three steps and the ball was already by him. That's just right down Broadway and smacked a little top spun. But look, Pierce goes after it and realizes that he should have been running straight back after that ball, not sideways to go get to it because it was coming. Jackson Appel bats showed bunt. That's ball one. Well, the ground rule double by Montgomery bounced into an empty Auburn bullpen in right field. It's no longer empty. They've sent, I think, six guys down there to the bullpen, and they're going to start getting some potential relievers warmed up as it's a struggle for Alsup early on. Well, he goes four straight to Grahovec, so he doesn't find the zone there, which is a control problem. And then he goes home run double, both balls absolutely scorched. So early troubles here. That was a good swing put on it. That may stay in. Nope. 
We can see it from where we're sitting. There's this north wind, and the ball hits the apex, and then it just stops moving foul, and it starts working back to the field. We can see it sometimes from the booth here, but those flags, you got to be aware if you're in the field that a ball that you may give up on may not stay out of play, may come back. Caught the outside corner on Jackson Appel. Also, just trying to get the first out of the inning. Jackson Appel can work counts. Very good two-strike hitter. It's He's so calm. He's just so patient. The movement, the load, the stride, everything about his approach is just screams good two-strike hitter. He doesn't get antsy. He doesn't go get the ball. He lets the ball come to him. He's hit it hard. Giving chase is Pierce. That's going to land foul right on top of the playground. Spencer's corner out there in right field. It's a nice night for baseball. A lot of the kids in Bryan College Station, this area didn't have school today due to Good Friday, so there'll be plenty of them on the playground tonight, I'm sure. 3-2 pitch, and that's a rare strikeout for Jackson Appel. It's just the sixth time this season that he has struck out. You can see it drives him crazy. Waves through it. Oh, just under it. Under it by a while, too, or by a good bit. I was a low strikeout hitter like Appel. Uh, just drove me nuts to ever swing and miss at a strike three or have to walk back to the dugout. And a lot of times I was told I'd I should be more okay with it and it hit, maybe hit a few more home runs in that process, but I just, something about it, swinging and missing on a strike three was just like the worst thing in the world to me. And when Appel's only done it five times this year, it's crazy. That was upstairs to Ted Burton and now the Auburn catcher, Ike Irish. Two one now. <laughs> Nolan Kane gets a hand as he made the play on the high chopper. You got to pick your battles. He went with the easy play. He's got he has good judgment over there. He doesn't try and do anything that that he probably can't handle. Yeah. He said I'll just stick with the routine plays. 100%. Looks like it'll get out of play. Just landing short of the east lawn. Runner, hit, runners in scoring position last night. I think both teams were two for nine, maybe. I think I saw that stat. I could be wrong, so don't hold me to it. However, early on, looking at Trey Burton, lo looking at Ted Burton here to see if he wants to get a big hit with a runner on in scoring position. I think that sets the tone for the offense throughout that game. When you have opportunity early on and you see success, you feel like more success will come. You see a couple failures, a couple of strikeouts or weak at bats, not getting runs in. Pickoff play on there. I feel like hitters start to get a little tight. You think, hey, you know, last time we had a chance to, to scratch a couple across or had a chance to tie it, didn't do it, didn't do it again, didn't do it again, and then you feel like you can't do it. So early opportunity here. That's going to stay in play and in fair territory. Taking over is Javon Hernandez, the second baseman, to it. Well, we talked about it last night. Shot coming into this game. The average is respectable at 288. But he's barreled up some balls that have been caught this year. There was some tough luck for him earlier, but the luck possibly starting to turn. 
He had the home run last night, but he also had a check swing that resulted in a blooped base hit the opposite way. So maybe baseball starting to pay him back just a little bit. Went back up the middle, but that's exactly where Cooper Weiss was. Cooper Weiss just stood there and went in the last four years. Swinging away right away and ripping this opposite field over the wall is Cooper McMurray. That's his 11th of the year. Wasting no time putting Auburn on the board in the top of two. Holy smokes. That ball was smoked. Man. When you go to the deep part of the field, and there's a, that's a no doubter, as you saw from, look at this, opposite field. He knew it the second he hit it. Sorrell and Laviolette knew it. That almost went off the wreck wall. That, how far would he got there? 435. Then you get a north wind contributing to that. That probably went about 460 in the air. Opposite field. That ain't bad. Auburn getting right back into this. Chris Stanfield put three good swings on the ball last night and had two base hits. One of those swings that was an out was a hard line drive that was caught. So Stanfield two for four was really quality for the Tigers an evening ago. So the ball flying out of the yard early. Jace Laviolette, two-run homer. Cooper McMurray, solo homer. That's your scoring thus far. McMurray, the Auburn home run leader, just put his 11th out of the park. Stanfield keeps swinging it this weekend. Three for five. And he's barreled up a lot of Aggie pitching over these this one day plus couple of innings on this Friday. Yeah, he has. We talked about it yesterday. He hit two balls really hard, and it was, I think, it was his last at bat. He was fighting and fighting. And then he finally reaches out and barrels up a slider for a double. And right as we were complimenting how short he is to that ball, finding barrels, he was choking up. I love his. I love his approach. Smash one right up the middle there, too. So Stanfield, as we see Javon Hernandez come to the plate, Stanfield has blistered a ball to all three parts of the field so far this series. So where do you go if you're an Aggie pitcher? Because he's proven that he doesn't have many holes. Javon Hernandez finds himself down in the count after the foul ball. We've said it as a team, Auburn likes to run. It's Cooper Weiss who runs the most. Stanfield, pretty good on the base paths as well. He's six of seven on his stolen base attempts. That's into right field. Braden Montgomery won't let it get down. Liner into the glove, the Aggie right fielder. So with one out and Stanfield running at first base, Cade Ballou will come to the plate. He gets the start in left field tonight. It is just his third start of the year. It is the 13th game he's played in. Just eight at bats registered two for eight on the season. Yeah, the freshman getting his third start. That's what you said? Third of the season. This is go time for Baloo. You go put two good swings on balls this game, find a couple barrels, you'll get to start tomorrow. And then you opportunity again. You do that two or three times in a row. That leash gets real long, and you find yourself every day in this lineup. Then you control your own destiny. That's how you break into a, a lineup as a freshman. Well, Auburn with Baloo, they would call him homegrown. 
He is from Auburn, Alabama. Went to Auburn High School. Wow, that's great. That's got to be cool for him, his family, his friends. That prior to wearing an Auburn uniform, he saw plenty of baseball at Plainsman Park. Yep. So a few checks of Stanfield at first base. And a two strike pitch coming to Ballou. Mm. Breaking ball stayed up. Not sure if Jones meant to leave that up or that was a mistake, but that almost caught the top of that strike zone. That's the hardest one to pull the trigger on as a hitter. The top of the strike zone sometimes just feels like it's way too high to be called a strike, and that one was close there. Goes back down with the same pitch, changing eye levels on him, and he gets Baloo. That's a good sequence right there for Jones, just allowing three hard hit balls in a row. There's a slider, starts dead center, just gets under the bat, head to that back foot. That's kind of the goal with that pitch. He executes. So two down now with Stan Stanfield still at first base. Bobby Pierce, the right fielder, will step to the plate. Went around, they checked with first base umpire Kevin Sweeney. Rung him up. It's Stephen Hagen behind the plate calling balls and strikes tonight. That's a nice breaking ball. Dove away, not enough bat for Bobby Pierce. A full house at Bluebell Park. They're trying to urge on Tanner Jones to get out of the inning. They'll have to wait on it as he gives another check to Stanfield. Way out. Fouled away. Tanner Jones, his two SEC starts against Florida and Mississippi State. He totaled six and a third innings and 10 hits. Seven runs all earned. So he's looking for a bit better on this Friday night against Auburn. Trying to get through the first two innings with just the one run of damage. The solo shot by Cooper McMurray. That was fouled off of Jackson Appel. Both home plate umpires, Stephen Hagen and his pitcher, Tanner Jones, asking if you're all right. Appel checks out just fine, and we'll have another two strike pitch to Bobby Pierce. Breaking ball way outside. Jones is just trying to get out of this inning. Feels like a lot of pitches being thrown here to Pierce. Keep that pitch count down, only at 33. Coming in to get it, Gavin Grohovac. Late. Camarillo, when he got to AM, we were told he's very smooth with the glove, but you have to remember he did hit 371 for Cal State Northridge last year. 
and he is more than just a glove for the Aggies in 2024. He is hitting above 300. You see Chula Vista California his hometown. And he played in the Little League World Series. With his Chula Vista Little League team. Went four for eight in the Little League World Series Ooh. with Chula Vista. They won one game in that LLWS in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. They beat a San Antonio, Texas team. Ali Camarillo had a triple in that game. Rung up looking. Also, after allowing the first three Aggies on base, trying to get back on top now. His night started with a walk to Grohovac, a homer to Laviolette, and a double by Montgomery, but now he's sat down four in a row. He almost backed that up there, inside corner. Not sure he, you could see where um, I, Irish was set up there. That wasn't what he was looking to do. But that froze Camarillo. That's a big first out of this inning here for also considering how that first one went. Want to go get that leadoff guy this inning. Caden Sorrell, the freshman, making his fourth straight start in left field. In the three games prior to this one that he started in left field, he's combined to go four for 11, so he's essentially making the most of his chance. Mm. Tried to go the opposite way. Sorrell hitting eighth, then it's Ryan Targotch. Then you go back to the top of the AM order and Gavin Grohovac. That's another strikeout. And they'll have to throw him out to complete it. Yeah, also going right after bottom of this order after he only escaped the first, just giving up two runs. Felt like it was could have been off to the races. We even saw that Auburn bullpen get going three batters into this game. So Coming back out, good bounce back. Second inning so far for also Looking good. Ryan Targotch, a ton of power. He is being shifted somewhat to the right side. Really, it's more the shortstop, Cooper Weiss, almost playing directly behind second base. You look at Weiss there, I mean, shaded well over toward the bag. Targotch, 15 home runs two years ago. Ten last year. But he's trying to generate that power again. As this season, he has left the yard just one time. Hard cut. Yeah, I think the trick with Ryan Targosh or the key to, to, to success for Ryan Targosh is not missing the, the pitch that you get. You're going to get a pitch and a bat, maybe two. And he just he, he fouled him back, straight back. And man, also just dices through this Aggie offense in the bottom of two. Gets them all. Former players in the league by far the most of any conference. It shows you the talent in this league. It also shows you why just about every series is evenly matched, why every weekend is exhausting. It's just talent on talent. And what has eventually made its way to Major League rosters shows you why. 88 former SEC players on Major League rosters as the pros got started in earnest yesterday. I think we saw the Aggies have six out there. Seven. 
seven, which I just ran the math. That is uh, above average. Mm -hmm. I think average would be about six, just over six per SEC team. And there's the Aggies. Ross Stripling's going to get the start tonight for the A's against Cleveland. And then you'll see more Aggies pitch throughout the weekend. Bryce Miller for the Mariners. He goes on Sunday against Boston. Michael Waka is now a Royal. He goes on Monday at Baltimore. So Stripling tonight for the A's. Miller on Easter Sunday against Boston. Waka on Monday at Baltimore. I mean, there are some Aggie arms in the bigs. Derek Fabian has a full count. Fabian did not play in the game last night. Tanner Jones strikes him out here to start the top of the third. Yeah, nice there by Jones. Still trying to get back in that groove he had in the first inning. Just paint and heat. Outside corner there. Getting Pierce. Sorry, getting Fabian. And after getting Fabian, you go to the top of the order in Mason Mainers. He also struck out swinging earlier. The shift is on to the right side for him. Three infielders to the right side of second base from our vantage point. Camarillo, Targach, Burton all over there. Shortstop is essentially vacated. Shift not going to matter here because it's in shallow center field and into the glove of Jace Laviolette. So Tanner Jones, after struggling in his first two SEC starts, trying to get some distance in this one. Two and two-thirds thus far, and all he's really allowed is that solo home run to Cooper McMurray. But he's going now his second time through the order. Cooper Weiss flew out to right field back in the first inning. Something must have gotten on to the playing surface. It did in foul territory of baseball. So we have to pause momentarily for the Aggies Josh Stewart to pick that up and give it to a fan. Looked like he kind of left that high, mm -hmm. but Weiss missed it, fouled it off. Couple of those, they, they they end up work. They've worked out so far for Jones, but it looks like these pitches are backing up and being left up for him. And he has him down 0-2. Tried another breaker, but that dove low and away. So now two and two. Went back to the fastball, but that was away as well. Mm, that is so pretty. Hard hit, opposite way, two out single. And now one of the best base stealers in the country is aboard, and he's aboard at first with two outs. I'm sure Auburn would like to send him. Does it become a matter of selecting the right time to go? Oh, I think he'll probably, based off watching him just in that first at bat, first time he was on the base paths yesterday, he will look to go almost every pitch. That's the kind of base dealer he is. He's got the green light when he wants it. And it's when can he get a re read or a feel and a jump. Ike Irish has sent this to center field. Laviolette backing up, and he scoots onto the warning track to make the catch. Irish gave it a... And then after that, Grohovac could be. Fouled off Grohovac. I go back to a conversation you had with, with a guy named Craig Noto, the, the Wagner head coach. Oh, Wagner yeah. was here earlier this year for non-conference play with the Aggies. 
And Noto made his thoughts felt about this top three of the order for A&M. Grohovac, that's deep. That's going back. Right at the wall. Bobby Pierce will make the catch. Just short. The Lavulette wasn't short earlier. Opposite field. Jack to left. Oh, just like Cougar McMurray, no doubter to the opposite field. Just shows you the sheer, sheer strength. 108 off the bat. But power to all fields, that's what makes him so dangerous. Now, Lavulette's first pitch swinging, and that's going to be in play for Fabian. And a big quick out for Alsup. He's starting to cruise. We've seen this before. It'll happen. You go tag a pitcher early and then let off the gas. Don't keep the same focus. Don't keep the same pressure. They settle in, and next thing you know, you've allowed the starter to go six or seven innings when you had him on the ropes. And it seems like Alsup's doing that right now. Seems to be settling in. Braden Montgomery now. But I go back to that story about Craig Noto, the Wagner coach. He said each would sign, or not each. He said these top three in the order, they're going to sign for 20 million one day. He said one for eight and two of them for six. He goes, I can't figure out which one the eight will be yet. Yep. <laughs> well, if you look at projections, he's probably not far off with Laviolette and, and Grahovac. I bet you most people would anticipate them being first rounders or top 15 picks. Montgomery's probably in that same boat too now things have to continue on the trend that they're on but you know th that's not crazy that <laughs> what he said and kind of put that into perspective what you get to watch this year if you watch Aggie baseball you'll more you're more likely than not in my opinion to be watching three future big leaguers in the one two and three hole right now but at this moment in the bottom of the third Chase also is trying to cruise right through him Speaking of one, two, three hole, the Dodgers pivoting a little bit. The Dodgers one, two, and three hole. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani. Three Hall of Famers, most likely. That's fun. It's not fun to face. No, no, no. It's fun <laughs> if you're a Dodgers fan. Over there in the NL West. Yeah. Slow mover. Northbound. Yep. Behind the wall. I think that. Engineer wanted to watch Braden Montgomery bat. But Chase Will Johnson and Boomer White with you on the SEC Network tonight. AM looking for the series. Auburn looking to get even. And the finale is tomorrow here in College Station at 7 p.m. All night games this weekend between the Aggies and Tigers. And I don't know if I ever played in a series like that. You would like that, you know. This, you don't like going to the ballpark at 9 a.m. and looking up, and you're still there after the game at 5 or something. It's kind of nice to be able to have a slow morning. You do that three games in a row. It's kind of rare. And they've had some fantastic crowds here at Bluebell Park, and this is another one on this fr on this Good Friday. They're doing it in Auburn as well, Plainsman Park. They're starting to set records there as far as attendance. It's a cool field. Very cool field, fun fan base. Two trips to Omaha will do that. As an opposing hitter in the SEC, did you like that monster wall in left field at, at Plainsman Park? And you were a right-handed hitter. Oh, yeah. Well, I got that, that one. There's a story behind that wall that you know better than me, but it, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've hit batting practice at Fenway and I've hit played at Minute Maid, both kind of bigger walls in left field. And I think that is the shortest porch. So I think it's like 300 feet there, which is pretty dang short. So it doesn't feel that intimidating. Like you can't hit one over it. Now you see McMurray draw a walk there. From Jones, a, a leadoff walk, bringing Stanfield to the plate, who's been a nemesis for the Aggies so far this series. But I think, you know, you, you put a wall, a bigger wall at 315, 330 feet, you know, that, that, that changes a lot of things. But the, the wall at Plainsman 
uh, or on the planes is is only I think at about 300 feet, so not super bad. Like you said, Chris Stanfield has barreled up a few baseballs this weekend. He singled back in the second inning. 0-1 count to him here. I think Vanderbilt has a wall. I didn't play there. Does Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt have a has a wall, yeah. In left field. Yeah, they have a bigger one. Well, Auburn, we told you they use the bunt as a weapon. They'll try it often, sometimes for a base hit. The way Stanfield has swung the bat this weekend, I'm not sure I'd have him bunny. Breaking ball. That is in play for Ted Burton. It's like the first non quality at bat Stanfield's had this weekend. Soft little foul out. That was big, though. Middle of the order here. You have a leadoff walk and one run game. Good job by their by Jones getting that fastball in enough to get a week out now ground ball away. Jones in his SEC starts just went two and a third against Florida. He went four innings against Mississippi State. He could get to four here if he can get through the Tigers in this frame. Mm. Paint inside corner right there. Jones stuff looks good. Velocity still there. I think you definitely want to see him if your coach Sloshnag will get you into the fifth, maybe the sixth, give you some distance. But the stuff is good. That's sharp right there. He's missed over the plate a couple times, and they've been punished. I feel like the control's tightened up. So both pitchers very similar today. High velocity. Not a ton of success so far in their SEC starts. That could be two. Taylor made. Perfect. Number one pick of the draft, and he's now with the big club in Detroit, the Tigers. Jackson Appel, that's a laser to right field. He starts off the bottom of the fourth with a base hit. So, also on the, uh, real quick though, on the, on the Tigers list of MLB players, you saw Edward Julian, he was great at Auburn. He's a twin. Came off the bench on opening day in Minnesota's 4-1 to one win over Kansas City. Got a base hit. It's Julian's second season with the Twins. Hit 263 as a rookie last year. Well, Ted Burton showed bunt. It's not really what the Aggies do a whole lot. That's more the Auburn mode of operation. Yeah, that, that's not, that for the Aggies, that's not going to be put on. So that's not going to be called uh, a drag bunt from Coach Schlossnagel or the dugout. It's going to be on the hitter to recognize that there's an opportunity there. Burton in the first inning popped up. That was in on the hands, and then he fouled it off his foot. See where it gets him. Yeah, we're off the foot. Not sure if the guard helped or not, but most guys have him there in case. We saw, I think, a couple yesterday foul off the, the body parts and miss the guard. 
Ooh. Burton found the gap in right center field. Appel is around second on his way to third. Burton is churning for second. Teddy two bags is what they call him. And he just doubled. That was pretty, pretty, pretty. Look at him stay on the slider. That's a good pitch, too. Wow. Go down and get it. Get the barrel under the ball. Stay on it. Shove it the other way. You got a little wind helping you to get in that gap. Good swing there by Burton. Two in scoring position. No outs. And Hayden shot to the plate. Columbia transfer. A variety of ways to get the job done here. Well, yeah, it's, it's all transfers out there trying to produce here. Jackson Appel singled. He's at third. That's a pin transfer. Ted Burton, that's a Michigan transfer. Shot the Columbia transfer at the plate. That's out in front of home plate. He'd like that check swing back. He's down 0-2. Well, he's down 0-2. He's thinking contact. He's got to believe contact would likely get Appel home. Going to have to protect the plate. Didn't do it. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Can't do that if you're shot. The first pitch he saw was a slider a little up, and he didn't wave at it. Then he got himself in a position where he's Hitting from behind. And he goes after that right there. That's a great pitch by Alsip there, but you're taught as a hitter in this situation when you're trying to get an RBI, sack fly will do it. The first thing you see up, you go after. Big shot missed that there. That's still a transfer trying to bring him home. Holly Camarillo from Cal State Northridge. He struck out looking his first time. Got the corners in right here. As you can see, McMurray there, and here he comes. Just in case there's a sack bunt, maybe. Safety squeeze would be possibly in play here, although you, you look at the Aggie offensive track record, they're probably not squeezing even with the bottom of the order, but corners are in. But still only one out, so same situation applies to Camarillo as did shot. First thing you see up, you're trying to get under the ball, but now you're fighting with two strikes. But Camarillo to center field, Stanfield waiting on it. This will get the run home. And also heading to third base is Burton as Appel scores. Three to one, Camarillo gets the RBI. Quite surprised there that also went with the fastball in. Pitch selection, you're trying to keep the ball on the ground. Avoid a sack fly as you see the bubbles are, wow, they are everywhere. Holy smokes. But he went in with two strikes to try and get in on the hands of Camarillo and he got the, pulled the hands in, elevated it with this north wind. Easy sack fly there, doing his job. But if you're a pitcher there, you keep the ball down. You want to keep it down. You want to get yourself a ground ball and try and keep the ball in the infield. And there's now two outs, but still opportunity. Caden Sorrell bats with Ted Burton at third base. Before this inning, Chase Alsup had sat down nine straight Aggies. But A&M gets back on the board. Alsup, a disastrous start. Bottom of the first inning, he walked Krahovac, allowed a homer to Laviolette, and then Montgomery doubled. And then he started the string of nine in a row, sat down. But this inning, an Appel single, a Burton double, and a sack fly by Ali Camarillo has produced another run for the Aggies. Sorrell chops this. Hernandez will throw him out. That will end the inning. The Aggies strand a man at third base. They do get a run. His opening game at Kyle Field, August 31st against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 
And then there's a game on the back end of the schedule that a lot of Aggies will notice, I'm sure. Yep, bookend pretty well this season for them. The rivalry uh, will be renewed on November 30th of this year. Texas A&M and Texas will play at Kyle Field. Kate Ballou fouled off. Told you earlier that Ballou is making just his third start of the season. He's just two for nine this year. There's the slider right there. That punched him out his first hit bat, getting under, under the barrel, coming inside on him. See if Jones sticks with that plan or wants to continue to mix. Sometimes you see something that works and you're going to stick with it until they prove they'll hit it. There it is again. Actually, no, the changeup. So slider in under the hands, change up soft away. It's enough to get Baloo in both at bats today. Look at that, just dropping. The bottom falling out from under that, fooling Baloo, and that's, he's getting the full dose of Tanner Jones today. Two very well pitched at bats from Jones to Baloo. Getting up the middle is Targach. He'll throw out Bobby Pierce. So for Tanner Jones, it's now four and two thirds innings pitched. This is his longest outing of the season. Twice this year, he's gone four innings on March 9th against Rhode Island on March 22nd last weekend against Mississippi State. So this is his longest outing of the year, the four and two thirds. And we told you his two SEC starts have been rough against Florida and Mississippi State, six and a third combined, seven earned runs. But thus far, his best SEC start. And he's trying to get some distance and go even longer here for the Aggies. Most pitches he has thrown in a game is 79. That was in that four inning performance against Rhode Island on March 9th. So he could cruise on past that as he is already in the 70s now. Coming in and out. Laviolette coming in. And that would have been really hard to win a series. Targos lands on one, and man, he made that. Stanfield made that look so easy going after that ball. That was a line shot with the wind pushing it. Stanfield can fly out there. But yeah, I mean, all things considered, Auburn, the Tigers used five arms yesterday. Aggies dug into that bullpen pretty good. They were gonna have that bullpen going four batters into this game and Chase Alsop has settled in. Definitely given them some life and a chance to come back and not only win this, but save a bullpen for game three tomorrow. That is stung into the gap in left center. Grahovac rounding first. There's gonna be a play at second base. No, there's not. He got there quickly. Thought they had a chance to make it close, but he slid in as the throw was cut off. Look at him stay on the, the slider. First pitch slider, too. That's how you recognize spin. Probably not hunting that, but recognized it quick enough where he could keep his bat moving and adjust on the fly. That's hard to do early in a count, depending what you're sitting. If he was sitting on it, then that's just hitting 101, knowing what you're looking for and executing. But his pitch recognition is off the charts. So my guess is that he's looking heater, adjusted the the slider and smacked it to left center, giving Jace Laviolette here a chance with a runner in scoring position to add to that Aggie lead. Grohovac just hit his eighth double of the season. He leads the Aggies in that category. Cooper McMurray will take the bag himself to retire Laviolette. Grohovac went to third base. All of 
the top three in the order for the Aggies has an extra base hit tonight. Grohovac a double. Lavulette a homer. Braden Montgomery a double. Tops in the SEC in RBIs. He's got a chance to drive in another with Grohovac at third base. So Montgomery doubled off him in the first inning, and then he got him to ground out to second base in the third inning. Montgomery one for two. Montgomery very quality with runners in scoring position this season. 429 the average in that situation. That's one, a, one and one. That's a two seamer right there, and the velocity is anywhere from 90 to 96 for Allsup. And that heater, four seam can get up to 96, but that was 90 miles an hour, and that's a two seam sinker, not a changeup that he's taking velocity off of to get a little more movement on. You saw it run out of bat for Montgomery, and then he just backdoors a slider right there. Two great pitches here, big moment. This game definitely still in reach for the Tigers, but gets a little more tough here if Montgomery can come away with an RBI. Just missed outside with the same pitch, it looked like. Yeah, same pitch, but missed the spot. You could see with Ike Irish, he was set up low and in. You could just see. Rarely is a catcher going to set up at a spot where he doesn't want the ball. So you're looking for something away, down and away right there. Missing up again. Rahovac gets his lead. Full count to Montgomery. And he's hit that well to left. And Braden Montgomery has left the yard. 14th homer of the year. The SEC's RBI leader tacks on two more. He is now driven in 44 this season. 5-1 to A&M. The bubbles are out in full force. Braden Montgomery is a freak at the plate. When he gets a swing off, he rarely misses. Pull side, opposite field, you name it. He's got the full package, and that was a big time swing and a two strike count with two outs in a close game, and he knows it. Fired up, Aggies take a five to one lead here in the bottom of five. Now Jackson Appel, who's one for two, ripped a base hit to right field in the last inning, and later in the frame would come home to score. Struck out his first time up, and we told you at that point it was just his sixth K of the season. And he is an everyday player. He's got another base hit. He is scorching hot right now. And Appel will have a double. The extra base hits coming in bunches for the Aggies. Look at him go down and get this. He's fooled. He's fooled. But he's got the back control to go down and get it. Delay those hands just a little bit, sir, and find a barrel. Appel's about as hot as a hitter as there is in the country, and when you're doing that. Ever since uh, Ted Burton got hot with two base hits at Michigan, his teammates there called him Teddy Two Bags. They're starting to call him that down here. He had his fifth double of the season earlier. But that's just a quality baseball nickname. I'm sorry, Teddy Two Bags. That's as good as it gets. I asked him about it. He said he likes it. He approves of it. He said his middle name is William. Ted William Burton. Not Williams with an S, but 
He said maybe there's something there too. There you go. So. <laughs> Back up the middle, but that's where they had him played with the second baseman, Javon Hernandez. And Hernandez will throw out Burton. D1 baseball serves. Mainers strikeout, fly out. He's 0 for 2. Tries to bunt his way on, and that's laid down beautifully. Nothing Gavin Grohovac could do there. Targotch backs things up as that throw is awry. Bunt single for Mason Mainers. A perfect bunt is indefensible, and this is a perfect bunt, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. It is soft. It is dead. It is right on that line. Grohovac's ready for it. He's there, and there still was no play. If you can do that, you can keep infields guessing. You can draw them in, creating more room for, for you to get hits. But you just got to tip your hat there if you're the Aggies. Another bunt. Cooper Weiss was... tried it, and Appel went to second base thinking it was a fair ball in front of home plate, but they're calling everybody back. Foul ball on the bunt by Cooper Weiss. Weiss is one for two with a single. Alert by Appel, he retrieved that immediately and said, look, I'll get the lead out. And he made a hard throw to second base. Man, we're getting some smells from some grill or someone's well, cooking. It's something. a nice night. The sun is setting. The grill is open. Pre-game, we had quite the buffet up here. We sure did. We eat well. Sometimes it is brought to us. Sometimes we're at the concessions. Today it was concessions. Either way, you eat pretty good at Bluebell Park. Yep. But, man, it's just been perfect weather. Such a nice Hello. night. No, the food's gone. You're not going to see any. I mean, the, the <laughs> nope. Boomer might be saving one bellies? sausage wrap for later. Half of one. Don't <laughs> half, tell them. Half. Getting cold. You don't want anybody to come get it. No. <laughs> You tell them it's gone. Nobody tries to come. Get That's it. a good point. Oh, quick visit there, man. Schlossnagel was out the second that ball crossed home. Yeah, I think you're right. That's just how it happens when you're a freshman. You get an opportunity just like he did. You capitalize, you execute. You're going to get your next chance. And to put the freshman in in a 3-1 count, which he ended up just walking Weiss, in an SEC game, Big situation to inherit some runners. You 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 really like what you saw from him, and, and you have some confidence. So Moss should feel really good about the opportunity. But this pitching staff is so deep that something goes wrong here. There can be a quick trigger, and the next guy up. This is not a bullpen that relies on one or two arms. Well, two aboard, and you have to face Ike Irish with nobody out. That's a tall order for a freshman. Irish put a good swing on a ball last at bat. Almost got to the wall. Caught at the track. Punched out his first at bat. But he's got some lightning in those barrels. Or in his barrel. And he's been taking some, some good swings. And he's smashed that one right on cue. There's still nobody out. Auburn rolling here. Irish drives in Mason Mainers, and Cooper Weiss goes to third. Irish has a double. Look at this. Gets a hanging breaker. Recognize it. Spins on it. Big hit. Auburn now down just three, cutting into the Aggie lead. As you see Mainers come across home. Irish did a little jump. Murray blasted one to the other side of the field last at bat. Would have gone over the scoreboard. I don't know where you pitch him here, trying to get into the head of Weston Moss. Pitch him to that shift down and in. There it is. That's what he did, swing and a miss. There it is. Yeah, you got a shift on over there. Now you don't get it down and you keep it in. The ball could be on the tracks pretty quickly here. But, you know, going away isn't... Is it really any safer for a dangerous hitter like McMurray? 
Went fastball at 96 on the 0-2 and it missed just a bit in. That's off of Weston Moss, and he hits the, uh, heads the mound of the mound, and the ball is thrown away. Two score for Auburn. They're within a run, and still nobody out. They will get the training staff to come out and check on Weston Moss. I thought this got the hand or the elbow. See where he reaches out. Wrist. Glove wrist. Man, we saw almost a great play yesterday. The same same kind of play by an Aggie pitcher. And Moss left into the game. He's not just coming in to face a hitter or two. They're giving him the ball for the inning. Chris Stanfield up with the tying run at first base. This inning for Auburn, a bunt single, a walk, an RBI double, and then a single there by McMurray that had an error attached to it on the throw. Three are home for the Tigers. Nobody is out in the top of the sixth. Stanfield one for two in this game, three for six in the series, and he drilled that. That's likely a base hit. Very tough play for Ali Camarillo, and he couldn't handle it. Stanfield keeps barreling up. His career spent at, what, Sam Houston. Oh, he was a blend transfer, blend. junior college transfer. Who was, we had a a and had a guy two years ago from Sam Houston, a lefty reliever I'm blanking on. Okay, Blinn. Anyway, think about that transition, just like the starter yesterday for the Tigers. Quite the journey to get, I'm talking Connor McBride, quite the journey to get to a, having a big time role in a major D1 program and Austin Bank being named the best reliever in America's pretty sensational. I bet he'd take it from where he was a couple years ago. Can't go to him tonight after he threw the four innings an evening ago. It's Brad Rudis on and a 2-1 count to Javon Hernandez. Away and onto the lawn. Two and two. That's a nice pitch. Got him swinging, and the Aggies finally get the first out of the top of the sixth. Yeah, that was nice. Here comes the Frisbee. Not a submariner, but a side armor. Flips that Frisbee, and you can see Hernandez just uh, not feeling at that at bat. And I've been there. A right on right side arm submariner. If I had to step in the box, I was just should have just walked on back to the dugout. Sometimes you just don't pick the ball up that well, and you can just see by the wave at that strike three that he wasn't seeing it. Baloo has not been seeing it so far today. The freshman who got the start. He could change that right here and tie the game with a big swing. Shredded. Heads up. Foul and look out on the lawn. Got 
everybody seems to be okay, and somebody's going to have a souvenir. Still 0-2 to Ballou. Well, he kind of leaned <laughs> toward the plate. He was going to be okay if that hit him. Mm -hmm. Ballou stays closed very well when he strides. He keeps that front hip, front shoulder close it allows him to go the other way really well it's a good take there but when you re it's almost like he dives out at the ball he really strides at or across home plate makes you a little susceptible to to having a fastball get in on your hands there yeah what well, look at his back you can see it's closed up it's closed and then he coils and goes Get a little more power that way. I was the opposite. I would open up. I would fly open. Couldn't stand it. But I uh, I didn't cover the plate as well as he did. But I may have got to the inside pitch a little better. Well, Rudis is putting forth quite the effort. And he needs one more to get out of this with A&M still in the lead. Goes with the heat. And you can see it's by him. It's just by him. The approach, the swings aren't bad. Baloo's just off the ball. Hat trick for the freshman today. And Brad Rudis, uh, an out away from really getting the Aggies out of a jam here. He's got to get through Bobby Pierce and his breaking ball starts him off with a strike. Pierce is grounded out twice. Mm. He's out in front of that. And Blue Ball Park will come to its feet. Auburn has put up three. Auburn is back in it. A&M trying to stay in the lead by a run. No throw. Now with him stepping off and not making a throw, he cannot do that again during this at bat. Crowd's getting louder, so he's got to really listen in on that pitch comm system within his hat. Just off the plate, threw him a fastball. Rudis had something extra on that one. You could just see the recoil from a sidearm position. If you're getting the heater up to 90 miles an hour, that's pretty firm right there. See if he goes back to it or flips a Frisbee in there. Check swing. Rung him up. Rudis comes in and strikes out three Tigers. So everybody in action tonight. This weekend there were four series, including this one that started on Thursday. Three of them began on Friday, and those three will close out on Easter Sunday. One more look at that scoreboard. Alabama won a one-run game last night against Carolina. Tried to do it again today. Kentucky's 5-1 in the league. And Arkansas is bobbled and shot will run. Take him how you can get him, I guess. Gets beat there on a changeup away. Just hits a lazy chopper. You may have seen Javon Hernandez just look up a little too early there. That was candy hop right to his mitt. Just dropped it. So when we showed you those scores, Arkansas, they are 6-1 and one after they beat LSU last night. They're atop the West. These Aggies, these Tigers, and everybody in the West chasing Arkansas right now. Everybody in the East actually chasing Kentucky after the first two weekends. Breaking ball to Ali Camarillo. Evens the count one and one.
good pitch. They're, he's mixing well. Tilly's coming in, showing everything he's got right away. Slider breaker and a and a heater, a changeup breaker and a heater. Change up to the lefties, curveball to the righties. Got Camarillo down on the count here. Where's he going? Tries to climb the ladder at 93. If you're Tilly and Auburn right here, you want to go right after Ali Camarillo, Caden Sorrell, and Ryan Targos, the last three hitters. No free passes. You don't want to turn the lineup over with some runners on here. You finally claw back into the game. This is a big inning for Auburn to go hang a goose egg. Look out. That's why you wear those helmets. Nolan Kane fielded a soft chopper earlier. He wasn't going to reach out for that one. A&M led five to one. They have a two-run homer from Jace Laviolette tonight. They have a two-run homer from Braden Montgomery as well. They looked on cruise control. But in the top of the sixth, the first five Tigers to the plate reached base. They plated three runs and, as you say, brand new ball game. Kind of the story of yesterday's game. Aggies jump out 3-0. Tie it up via Maynard's home run. Aggies take the lead again. Then free passes, sloppy baseball. Next thing you know, you're in the late innings in a high scoring, tight game. That's what we're seeing here. Runner goes. That just missed to Ali Camarillo. Breaking ball, and he walks. Well, two free passes right there to the six and seven hole. You got eight, nine coming to the plate here. And then, of course, you got Murderer's Row following that. So I'll say it again. Tilly's got to go right after Sorrell. If you're going to get beat, get beat by the eight and nine hole. Don't issue free passes and, and, and set yourself up for a big inning. In the dirt, and that's a nice block by Ike Irish with base runners on. Chatter is over. Sorrell took a deep breath, steps back in from the left side. That stayed upstairs. Breaking ball that didn't really have any bend. Mm, don't know if he was on take there or what. It's a good pitch to go after, but in this situation, it could be taken till you get a strike. Sometimes that's what you'll see when pitchers struggle finding the strike zone. He won't be taken here, though, for a strike. He, he's ready to go. Let's see if Tilly comes back with the fastball. He did, and he hammered it. That's deep to left. Caden Sorrell has left the yard. And he gives the Aggies another cushion. Three run homer opposite field. Man, how about the lefties today doing damage to the opposite field? First Laviolette, then Sorrell. Montgomery. Look at the swing here. Fastball away. He didn't miss it. Got it up into the jet stream. It's flying out today. And Sorrell with his third of the year, fired up as he rounds, around, rounds first base. And the disappointment from Tilly there is Auburn gets to one run, comes back after a three-run 
top of the sixth. And man, just like yesterday, three runs. Aggies come answer with three runs. We saw it a night ago, and we're seeing it right here. So important when you go have a big offensive inning as a team to go back out there and do everything you can uh, to hang a zero on the scoreboard that next inning. It just keeps all momentum on your side. And then two free passes that Auburn issued on an error and a walk. That's going to land fair. Ryan Targach around first base. He has a double. It's all extra base hits tonight for a and &M. Fastball, Targosh goes down. Doesn't get all of it by any means. If he, has, if he does with his power, it's out of the yard. Kind of gets jammed, hits a spinner out there. But you see right there, just gets down. And Bobby Pierce pulls up, decides not to dive. Gets by him to the wall. You're really good numbers. And an opponent's batting average against him at just 180. Tried a breaking ball to start the count on Grahovac. Last time up, he doubled. He scored a couple of runs tonight. He also has a fly out that was pretty deep to right field, all the way up against the wall almost. Armstrong going to be just like Rudis for the Aggies. You're seeing the sidearm, not submarine, but sidearm. Fastball is going to run on the arm side. So into a right-handed hitter like Grahovac, the slider is going to kind of just work very horizontal away from the right-hander. So there it is. You see that sink come in there at 89. It's going to be a two-seam type fastball sinker that runs in and down to right-handed hitters. Here we go. Get a good shot of this sinker we're talking about. Watch it get in under the bat there. Fouled off the knee. Yeah, you could tell he didn't like it. No, it, it makes hitters uncomfortable. It really will. It really does. Especially when you're a right-hander facing a right-hander. Got past McMurray at first base. Churning around third and sliding in at home is Ryan Targoch. Grahovac drives him in. It's 9-4, to four, and there's still nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. So, so, so impressive. The freshman, Gavin Grahovac, just gets beat up inside by a sinker. There goes the sinker away. Think you'll fool him because you got him inside. But no, he stays on that pitch and shoots it away, which is very hard to do against a right-handed sinker. And he's fired up. You can see the emotion as the Aggies still work for more insurance. Top of the order tonight for A&M is five for nine. Grahovac, Laviolette, and Montgomery. Grahovac has a double and a single. Laviolette has a two-run homer. Behind him, Montgomery has a double and a two-run homer of his own. Looks like it'll get out of play. So the top of the AM order in this series, Grohovac, Lavulette, and Montgomery, they are combined 11 for 22. As good as advertised, maybe even better this weekend. That's so intimidating for pitchers. It's so hard. You start the game off facing one through four. You're going to see him four times a game. So not only do you have to buckle down and just try and do damage control against them, but you, you have to be so intentional on getting the other five hitters out. Grovac, he's got two doubles in the series. Laviolette had a... Double last night, home run tonight. Montgomery homered last night and has homered tonight. 
I mean, they are doing damage. It's a Man. nice pitch by Armstrong, and he got Lavulette first out of the inning. <laughs> Jace just said that is disgusting. You can see it. He's not picking up that changeup as he passed Montgomery. You can read his lips. I love it, too, because you can see how fooled he was. Look, that's a changeup that just, yep, it looks like it's coming right at you at 90 miles an hour. Not only does it put the brakes on, hit the Velcro, whatever you want to say, but it, but it drops, the bottom falls out from it. And when one of the balk, got a balk there. Maybe. Maybe not. Will, help me out here. I don't know well, what I'm looking I, at. I'm wondering if this is some sort of a clock violation. They put a ball on oh, the count. Did. Yep. To Braden Montgomery without a pitch being thrown. So some sort of violation. Could have dealt with the pitch clock. So now it's 2-0 and oh after what is actually the first pitch arrives high and away. Pitcher has 20 seconds to throw. Batter has to be in the box and addressing the pitcher by 10 seconds. So coming into tonight, Braden Montgomery was the A&M home run leader with 13. And then LaViolette matched him in the first inning with his home run. That gave LaViolette 13. And Montgomery took back the lead in the fifth inning with his home run. So he's at 14 now. Yeah, we talked last night. Do they know this chase is going on, where each other stands? I'm sure they do. Question is, do they address it? Do they talk about it? Maybe, maybe not. Said he went around. And Armstrong's got disgusting stuff. The changeup's nasty, even by the words of Laviolette. It's disgusting. Just fooled Montgomery there. Runner was going. Doesn't matter. It's a walk. The heater from a sidearm release at 92-93 is also. So uh, Armstrong thought that was, thought there was a 2-2 count there. I read his lips. He said, is that not a full count? So I don't know if he even realized it was full when he released that ball. He was surprised Montgomery got the walk. Remember, he had a ball on the count right away yep. because of the violation. That's it. That's why he was confused. Jackson Appel, he's two for three. I mean, he is scorching hot as of late. What an addition to this roster. The pin transfer. Also really good behind the dish. He can throw out runners. And as we said earlier tonight, this was coming into tonight, the five strikeouts. He struck out for a sixth time this year, but just six Ks all season long. He didn't strike out much at pin either. He's so calm. He just quiet, 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 then he explodes into the pitch, but he doesn't leak. He doesn't try and go get the ball. So he tries to see it as long as he can before he commits. Where you get in trouble is when you want to go get it. You get excited to swing, and then you can't hold back. You end up chasing because you're ready to go get it. So 10 hits tonight for A&M. Eight of those have gone for extra bases. Tip foul, and it's back into the mitt. It's a rare two strikeout game for Jackson Appel. He does have two hits tonight, but he's also struck out twice. Probably the first time this year. Odds are. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's just right down Broadway, too. He was just late. Just late. He's frustrated because that's a good 3-2 pitch to get after and hit. 
Especially for a good contact hitter, but when you're late, that's kind of what happens. You, you're under the ball, and you can be on it, but if you're late, your bar barrel's not going to catch up to it and center it up. Ted Burton quickly down in the count, 0 and 2. Burton has one of the extra base hits tonight for AM, a double back in the fourth. On the breaking ball. It really has thus far been the sixth innings on both nights. Burton drives home. Grahovac maybe. He does because the play at the plate, the ball got away. Would have been close. But Grahovac slides in safely. Burton an RBI single. They're at the corners, and AM has now put up a 10 spot. Watch Burton pull the hands in, shoot the fastball the other way. Right through the four hole. No one's there. Wide open, and then a great throw by Bobby Pierce on the money. It looked like the tag went. Oh, there's no ball in the. I was going to say, it looked like the tag almost simultaneously got Grahovic's hand, but there was no ball in the mitt. That's a problem. Shot chops that first base side. That'll end the inning, but it is a big fray and him well out in front again. It's 10 to 4 going to the late innings. Pinch hitter for the Tigers. Caleb Freeman. Out to face Brad Rudis. Mm. Good pitch. Freeman just going with a matchup here, bringing in the lefty off the bench. See the ball a little better from a sidearm righty. Cut Freeman, but that fastball dove away. Rudis. Rudis shut down that big sixth inning for Auburn. Stopped it in its tracks. When he came in, he struck out three in a row. He has faced four and he struck out four. Look at that nod of the head. <laughs> he knows he's dealing. Man, that's a smile of a kid in a candy store right there. Look at the changeup. You see the side spin. He's pronating that pitch as he turns his hand in, releases the changeup. Great angle there. Caught the bottom of the strike zone. But he is dealing. You are right. Top of the order now in Mason Mainers. Mainers got that big inning started in the third with a bunt single. Hit a three-run homer last night. Fouled that off his foot. Mason Mainers. He's just gotten better and better each year. He was at Jacksonville State prior to Auburn. 
He was a teammate of A&M's starting pitcher Tanner Jones at Jacksonville State. He found another one off his foot. It's going to start to get sore if you keep doing that. Yeah, Rudish just has everyone off balance right now. He's got every pitch in his arsenal ready to be deployed. Just got him with the change up. Showing the slider there. When you're commanding the in and outer part of the plate with two pitches, it just gets fun to be on the mound and very uncomfortable to be at the plate. Five, four, five. five. All of yeah. them. Everybody to the plate. Rudis has struck out. Well, everything's a strikeout pitch. The changeup lasted bad. Look at the fastball. It looks just like the changeup, too. It's that four seam spinning away, and you can see it go right by him. There. So when you have three pitches, and all three you can use as a strikeout pitch, that's when you really get hitters guessing. And we talked about it in the break, but man, Brad Root is reinventing himself. Arguably might not make the roster before the season. Figures out a way to be effective as a pitcher, drops his arm slot. Still throws three pitches, but just changes the, the eye level of the hitters, and that was enough to get him in the mix, and he hasn't allowed an earned run this year. That just rode right back over the plate. So did that outside corner. So a full count as he stays in the fight with Cooper Weiss. As a hitter, you're thinking, man, he could throw anything right here. He's proven that he'll do it. You got to protect the outer, outer half and react. And that's what you do right there. So you protect the outer half, the outer corner against the fastball. And then when you see and recognize spin, which is slower, off speed is slower than the fastball. Your goal is to react and then keep moving that bat. Because if you've set your sights away, you've given yourself more time to see the pitch for longer. As soon as you recognize off speed, you go after it. I do that again right here. Work the, work the ball the other way and then react. And Weiss is the first man that will reach base against Brad Rudis. That means Rudis is going to have to face Ike Irish. One of the best hitters in the SEC. Irish doubled his last time up. Pitchers at their workouts. One of those pitchers was Bryce Miller, an Aggie who was brilliant in his first year as a Seattle Mariner. And we told you earlier that Bryce Miller gets the start on Sunday in Seattle against the Red Sox. Nice pitch there to Ike Irish, one and one. Irish was three for four last night. So he's four for seven in the series, trying to get that to land, and it looks like he will. Base hit, shallow center field. Fifth hit of the weekend for Ike Irish. Him versus Cooper McMurray is a tall task, so 
Going to see if he can go get the last out of this top of the seventh inning. Yeah, overall, the numbers aren't bad for Sadeo. They were brilliant early in the season. But he's run into a rough stretch here as of late. He was knocked around pretty good in his last SEC outing last weekend against Mississippi State. The Aggies got him into the game on Tuesday against Houston Christian, and he threw a scoreless inning while striking out two. So they're hoping that leads to getting him back on track. Two and two now to Cooper McMurray. You can tell he's fired up about that. Shane Sadeo, a big. He's from Cyprus. Right down near Houston, Texas. Ollie Camarillo leads off. Good numbers so far for the big freshman. Auburn also has a new third baseman. And it is Caden Green. That's who played third base last night in a starting role for the Tigers. He went one for four in the game on Thursday. Inside and off the hands, uh, Camarillo managed to stay alive. Stayed alive again, this time off the end of the bat. The second he hit it. I mean, Camarillo belted this over the left field wall. He's fired up, too. And it is his second home run of the year. Ali Camarillo lands on a heater. Check that. I think it may have been a changeup down and in that he barreled up. And it was a screaming line drive out to left. Get a good look here. What are we seeing here? Yeah, it's a changeup, a right on right changeup. He hit it hard. And the balls are flying tonight. We just had a highlight reel for you of the home runs and tack on Ali Camarillo to that list. Aggies take 11 to 4 lead as they are blasting balls on this nice Friday night here. Camarillo, 104 off the bat. We said it, he's been more than a glove. I mean, he is smooth at shortstop, but more than a glove since putting on the Aggie uniform, transferring from CSUN, Cal State Northridge. Auburn also has taken Ike Irish out of the game behind the plate. Carter right in the game as the catcher. So a couple of changes for the Tigers. It just seems like the depth 
and the talent of this Aggie offense is just and so real quick. Irish went to right field. Oh, there you but go. But as you were saying, no, I, you just wear down pitching staffs, and I think that as you see a strike out there, Caden Sorrell, you know, you get to bullpen arms in the third or fourth inning, which is what it seems like they do most of the time. Come Saturday and Sunday, or in this case Friday, Saturday, you're, you're chewing into bullpens, and it's taxing to face this kind of talent offensively that Texas A&M has, and that's why you see these big fifth and sixth and seventh innings. A&M will get a pinch hitter in. Caden Kent will stay in the game in all likelihood and continue on at second base for Ryan Targach. And for Kent. He's got 13 starts on the year. And a 259 average. And this is also the 13th time he's come off the bench. Back up the middle, scorching. Ripped into center field, base hit for Caden Kent. I think that's the changeup again. Both hard hit balls coming from the changeup. Let's see if we can get a look. Yeah, it is just dying away. I don't know if these Aggie hitters are picking it up easily or what, but not bad pitches, but that one in particular gotten smacked around so far. Rehovacs had a night and had a weekend. Three hits last night, two more tonight. So two games into the Auburn series, he has five base knocks. He has reached base in now 16 games in a row. Physically does not look like a freshman. Mentally, they say he is much more mature as a freshman. And his performance this season far beyond what you might expect of a freshman. Yeah, they use the word makeup. Makeup just on overall maturity, baseball knowledge, talent, and, and his makeup is incredible. Years, years beyond where he actually is. And just like a Maybe a Tommy Tanks, Tommy White over at LSU, or a Jack Caglione. Very excited to watch him for two more years as that. May have been a little off the plate. I think the crowd agrees, and so does Grohovac. But Well, with Grohovac, he, we've talked a little bit about the start of the Major League season. His cousin, Garrett Mitchell, is with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he says they talk often. It's not just a distant cousin. He said he considers him one of his best friends. And he and Garrett Mitchell, they'll just send each other videos randomly of their swing and have the other one critique it. And that's not a bad somewhat of a mentor to have, an older cousin in Garrett Mitchell who's playing for the Brewers. No, not at all. And you get to see his process and what made him a big leaguer and what's making him a big leaguer. So, man, that is invaluable experience and knowledge that he has. And he just looks like he, he's just a baseball junkie. There's no doubt in my mind just watching him operate on a field that he's a baseball junkie. Alex Bregman was that way in college. Just loves the game, doesn't want to do anything else. Wants to learn, wants to grow. And then obviously his physical talent is just incredible. But fun guy to watch already as a freshman. Going to be just as fun the next couple years, I'm sure. Spinner off the end. Okay, I'm still hustling that one out, too. Two down now. Kent moved up a bag.
Lavalette looking to do a little more damage here. I feel like the last three or four games, he's kind of got back on the horse. He's off to a hot start. Slowed down a little bit there. But when he's doing that... Oh, that's just shy of the wall. Well, I was going to say, when he's doing that going the other way, that's when he's his best. He hit that. Would drop to two and six in conference play, the defending national champions. Also, when it comes to scores, we can check in on March Madness. There's been another upset. Yeah, man, the Wolfpacker riding that heater for sure. North Carolina State, an 11 seed. They beat the number two, Marquette. And NC State is moving on to the Elite Eight. Well, that's the first time Chris Stanfield looked off balance. He's had a great weekend, but strikes out there against Shane Sadeo. Yeah, it's just a slider under the bat, starting off, coming back in, and he looked. Stanfield looks so defeated like he's had a rough series or something. He's pretty much barreled every ball he's he swung at. But he's, he's obviously bummed when you strike out. But, man, he's he needs to hold his head up. Little drag bunt here. Wow. Got Javon Hernandez. Nice play by Shane Sadeo. He's really starting to feel it again. He'd gone through some struggles. But he had a nice little outing on Tuesday, and he's doing it again here on Friday night. Man, this is a great play to a fast runner in Hernandez. And look at Sadeo. Yeah, sometimes you have some pitchers take that a little personally when someone tries to bunt on you, think they can drop one down and beat it out. And you'll run into pitchers, too, who can't make that throw to first. We saw struggles yesterday with Josh Stewart just throwing it to home on a play. And... For a pitcher to not only field his position, but spin around and fire it quickly. It looked like that was. Safe call at first base. I thought that was a foul off the leg at home almost. I guess. We can't tell there. I mean, he, he did appear in real time to be out. But we'll see. See if we can see anything inconclusive here. It looks like the ball's in the glove. Oh, that's close. It's closer than I thought. What do you think, William? Under review. And let me see this for a play. Then I'll make my call. Come on. I've got an out call. I've got an overturn. You do? To an out call. I don't think the foot is on the bag once the ball is secure. The call at first base will be reversed. So that will end the inning. Call overturned. It's a three up, three down inning. The Aggies looking to take this games. The road team thus far was sporting a record of 12 and 34 in conference play to this point as we are now in the third weekend of league action. 12 and 34, the road team's record in the SEC. There have been 14 SEC series completed. The road team has only won three of those series. Wow. Life is tough in this league. It's even tougher on the road. Yeah, top to bottom, man, I think we say it every year that this, you know, has, there been, has the SEC ever been this good? Well, man, this year could argue maybe the toughest. When you have Auburn, who's one in six, looks like they may be one in seven soon in conference, go play the number one team in America, win a game, and lose the other two by a total of two runs. Uh, you, you have you good team. You could make a case that Auburn could have taken that series. For sure. Arkansas. For sure. 
And you're going to see that, I think, throughout the season uh, quite often. Mississippi State does it to LSU. Um, you're you're going to Kentucky, who's not typically top of the conference, is almost undefeated in college. It's just, it, it's, there's so much talent. Braden Montgomery center field. Deep at the wall. He has done it again. Third home run of the weekend, second homer tonight. Absolutely smashed. Dead center. Cast it up into that north wind. The changeup again. The changeup is getting hammered by this Aggie offense. You can see it out of the hand. I don't know if he knew he got it. He was jogging out of the box. But that's straightaway center. And did it get off the batter's eye? No, just over by a few feet. 404 the distance, just enough. But Braden Montgomery is all is advertised and more from the right side of the left side pull side oppo he is a dangerous man and he's not the only one in this lineup well i'll tell you who's really becoming a part of that murderer's row is this guy jackson appel is becoming one of the toughest outs on the a&m roster well, all that does when you add someone else in this bunch is just protect the other hitters. You can get a net over there. Some balls come screaming on that second deck. Going sure. to the bleachers, left field side. Now he went the other way. But what I was saying was when you put Jackson Appel behind Braden Montgomery, all of a sudden, if you're a pitcher, it's like, do I want to pitch around Montgomery to get to Appel? Not really. It's not a much better option. So then Montgomery sees better pitches. So the more you can do that, it, it ripple effects throughout the lineup. Got him there. Chasing. Wow. Appel, three strikeouts a day going into today's game. He had five on the year. I don't know if you call that a rough night because he still has two hits, two hits and one of them's a double. Yeah, so he's going two for five. He's a 400 hitter today, yet he still has. Yet he's actually struck out multiple times, so that's surprising. Yep, <laughs> so. yeah, and gets a pat on the back there for Co from Coach Schlosh. He's, he's not going anywhere in this lineup, so not worried there. Ted Burton has two hits. Fourteen hits for the Aggies, 12 runs, only an error for the Tigers. There have been a few free passes issued, but man, this is one of those games where you know, there's extra base hits and home runs galore. The Aggies have hit their way mostly to these 12 runs. Typically in conference, when you look up and you see such a big number as 12 or just double-digit runs, well, you can usually point back to some sloppy baseball maybe, some big errors or big walks, but, and this has just been a slugfest for the maroon and white today. Yesterday, we did see a couple of sloppy innings contributing to those runs, not today. For a and a, the season high in hits was actually on opening day. When they beat McNeese 15 to nothing, they rung out 17 hits. After that, there's two games in which the Aggies registered 15 hits. That was against Wagner in the finale of that series and against Rhode Island in the finale of that series. 14 tonight, it's the third time this year the Aggies have registered 14 hits in a game. And then, like I said, there's a couple of 15s, and the season high is 17, what they did on opening day against McNeese. I 
Aggies are looking to get to five and three in the SEC, trying to keep pace with Arkansas in the Western Division. Mark. Arkansas up three to two on LSU, and if Arkansas hangs on to win, they're seven and one in the league. But the Tigers, the LSU Tigers, are threatening right now against the Razorbacks. Our director, Thomas Burns, tells me. Yeah. Ted Burton still going with this at bat. Well, that Florida Mississippi State game turned it into a fun one. It was six to two Mississippi State. It's now six to six in Gainesville. About that at bat by Ted Burton. And how about the fact that he has three hits tonight? Beautiful. He's had a couple shooting the other way, man. That's that's fun baseball when you can see that slider and just say, whoop, poke it. Flat swing, low finish, drag the barrel through there, utilize the whole field, and we got a pinch hitter here for Hayden Shot. We're gonna have Hank Bard coming to the plate. The catcher, often DH. Bard gonna get a plate appearance. I don't think he's played the last few games, so you wanna, as a bat who's regularly in this lineup, let him see some live pitching. 14th game for Bard, eight of those are starts. It's kind of mixed as the starts are. They're mixed between uh, his role as a catcher and the DH. Got that in the center field base hit. Change up right over Broadway, right down Broadway, outer third maybe. Barb just flat swing off the end of the bat. That'll work. Ali Camarillo. So the first pitch to Camarillo calls strike. Well, Boomer, Florida has walked off Mississippi State in the bottom of the ninth. Wow. Cade Curlin base hit ends it. Florida wins 7-6. to six. Big comeback for the Gators. Home teams continue to get after it. This is going to be a tricky play. Quickly made by Javon Hernandez. Two in scoring position. Caden Sorrell launched the three-run home run as a part of a big five-run frame in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, that was a big swing. As a one-run game, Auburn had all the momentum. They were playing well. They just clawed back, and Sorrell 
three-run jack to break it back open, and then the floodgates open for the Aggies. But you can point to that swing right there as maybe the reason the game's where it's at. He drills another one to center. Oh, diving catch by Chris Stanfield robs him. Carter Wright is the hitter. Wright came into the game as the catcher. Now he bats for the first time. Smith, ERA over six, only five and two-thirds innings, but good stuff, strong velocity. Goes with a breaker there. Just one of, gosh, ten arms that Jim Schlossnagel and Max Wiener can wheel out of this bullpen that have outstanding stuff. Can't overemphasize how deep this bullpen is. I mean, you bring a guy out that's got five innings at throwing 94 with a nasty breaker, and he's your 10th guy out of the bullpen, arguably. Man, it's a deep pin as he gets some work here to try and, try and clean this game up. After the strikeout, Smith will face Caden Green. Series finale between the Aggies and the Tigers is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. It's going to be a late one. Nationally televised. That's a good swing by Green. As he comes into the game late today. First appearance. Turns around a 93-mile-an-hour heater for a single. We got any update on that... Uh, LSU Hogs game. It's tied at three right now. LSU was down 3 2. They were threatening. They do get a run. Those are two, maybe the most fun fan bases to keep quiet when you play in their, in their home. I will say. <laughs> now, they may say that about Texas AM, but I would argue that. Those fans know how to get an opposing team pretty worked up when you're playing in their house. So when you do something well and you go play good, that's pretty satisfying both in Fayetteville and Baton Rouge. Christian Hall is the hitter. Mississippi State was like too nice. They were they were loud, but they were nice, so you didn't really feel like you wanted to, to break their heart. Well, didn't you leave Starkville with a bunch of barbecue from the fans yeah. there at Duty Noble Field? Exactly, that's my point. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, good game. Here's it can't be that hostile if they're letting you bring barbecue back to the bus for the team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> As well, LSU, Arkansas, they're in the top of the seventh now, and it's 3-3 three to three tied up. Jim Schlossnagel wants a review. We'll take another look at it. Christian Hall, was he hit by a pitch or not? And yeah, I think that got off the, the cleat. Is it just dirt or does it get the cleat as well? I think, I think that's, well, I definitely do see dirt. Here's a good angle. Uh, I don't know. I see dirt. I don't know if I see cleat. It definitely could have nicked the cleat. <laughs> It's going to be hard to overturn if the call on the field is that he was hit by a pitch. Uh, Oops, the call's going to stand because Christian Hall is still at first base. That, that looked like a good call where you can't, you know, there's nothing inconclusive there. Can't really overturn that one. So 
Christian Hall and Caden Green are aboard with one out. Another pinch hitter in Gavin Miller. He stung this to left field, base knock. Base is loaded with Tigers. Good opportunity here for Smith on the bump. Only having five innings pitched this year. Goes and gets an early quick one out. Now he's got the bases loaded. How's he going to work out of the stretch, out of the jam? You have the luxury of doing this if you're Texas A&M up eight. Let him pitch through this for a while. He's going to have to pitch through Ike Irish. Left that up at 84 miles per hour. Irish has five hits this weekend. Some of those he hasn't hit very hard, but he does have a ripped double tonight, and he also blasted the three-run homer last night. Or excuse me, a solo home run last night. Crowd wanted it. That's a good pitch and a good take by Irish. So now two balls and two strikes. That may stay in. See if that wind's going to do anything to it. Nope. Aggies gave it a look. Still 2-2 two -two to Ike Irish. And the runner at third base, Green, had to duck on the chopped ground ball for Mike Irish. Irish showing not only can he hammer the ball all around the yard and with power to all fields, but you want to work away off the plate to him, he'll slap it the other way. Hard to shift a guy like that where he can do both hit for power, but you know, channel his two strike approach. Looking at a full count to Irish. Got enough of that to stay alive. He's fighting. One swing of the bat here cuts it to a little too close for comfort for the Aggies if the big, highly touted sophomore lands on one. If I'm him, that's what I'm thinking right here. Eight runs. Let me try to make this game interesting. And he just did it. Irish goes over section 12 for the second straight night. This is a grand slam. And it's 12 to 8. Yeah, I mean, he sees so many pitches in an at bat. That was what, the eighth or ninth pitch right there? You've seen all the pitches from Smith. You've seen the breakers, the heaters. You've timed them up. And wow, that pitch is out of the strike zone. It's so high. Look at these hands. Whack. Short swing. In the second no-doubter of the series, one yesterday, one today. Shows emotion every time. 
I'm just, he didn't almost miss first that time he did yesterday, though. He was so fired up. Tenth home run of the year for Ike Irish. And here's Cooper McMurray, who also homered tonight. And he has 11 bombs this season. Board. He will have a double. McMurray, three hits tonight. Man, these two bats back to back. I love watching Irish and McMurray. We're going to see a visit here, maybe a pitching change. But just look at the big boy right here. Stays coiled up, closed, ready to go the other way, and not only hits it, but pounds it the other way. That'll play at any level three with how well they're swinging the bats but we were an eight run game five minutes ago now you're a four run game on a hitter's ballpark so this game is not over yet I well, gotta give Auburn credit they continually have fought back all weekend down three runs twice last night came back to tie it both times Ultimately, A&M would win. Tigers were down five to one going to the sixth. Put up three. And they're at bat in the sixth. Got within five to four. They were down 12 to four going to the ninth here. The Irish Grand Slam got it back to Full count now to Chris Stanfield. Peary will field an underhand for the second out of the inning. McMurray is on third base. The Aggies aren't much concerned with that. Javon Hernandez is due up. Tried to bunt his way on last time. That's a good pitch. Rode in. Going one. Good pitch. Peary's executing in and out right here really well. Just another one of the 10 arms, 11 arms out of the bullpen that Max Wiener can go to. What's really nice about that is he, is he gets Hernandez waving at a slider. Is You can bring in these arms that are good, that are really good, but you can still save your top one or two for tomorrow. So you're not using the whole pin but you're still bringing in better arms. So still with two strikes, still a strike away. Aggies trying to take the series. One at nine to seven last night. And here they are, 12 to eight in the ninth tonight. Up and in, two and two. corners with two outs. Ninth hitter to the plate in the ninth inning for the Tigers. You know, we were talking 
in between innings there, uh, that diving catch that Chris Stanfield made, that, if that ball is not caught to end the bottom of the eight, uh, that's a 10-run rule. It would have ended the game. Yep, the Aggies would have won it right there. So not only are we in the top of the ninth and Auburn's trying to extend this game and making it pretty scary for Texas A&M, but the Aggies are using more arms. Brock Peary, he's a big arm that could be used for tomorrow that probably won't be now. Shane Sadeo was used. Yep. Runners on second and third now. So you go back to that diving catch and wow. That had some influence on this game whether Auburn wins or not. Ballou jumped all over that pitch and shredded it to right field but well found. Strike three, got him looking. And Brock Peary will end it. They get. Thank you. 